the round table from Meet the Press this morning. The panel is here. It is Wisconsin primary week, so we flew in one of the smartest reporters from the state, Charles Benson, our, from our local affiliate there, WTMJ in Milwaukee. Aline Cooper, Pentagon correspondent for the New York Times, is also here. Amy Walter, editor of the Cook Political Report, and David Brooks, columnist for the New York Times. Welcome all. Charles, I'll, I'll start with you. Right. On the ground, is this looking as bad for Trump as the polls say it? Well, clearly he had a bit bad week, but the anti-Trump forces were already going at them. You know, uh, they knew that they were to come into Wisconsin and make Wisconsin their Waterloo. But what they found out when they got there, the ground troops were already there, especially with conservative talk radio. I mean, they have been hammering him locally, local conservative talk radio, been hammering him for weeks. But also you have to keep in mind, Scott Walker, Paul Ryan. All right, Scott Walker's endorsed Ted Cruz. Paul Ryan hasn't endorsed anybody. But clearly, those two guys, their brand of politics has been really big time conservative issues. And they've won. And they've won. Yeah, so they have something to be happy about in Wisconsin. They do. And so they, uh, when they look at that brand of politics, that works better than what the Trump brand of politics is right now. All right, David, we've been here, I want to say, four weeks ago. You were convinced Trump wasn't going to get the nomination. Two weeks ago, you wanted to say you were convinced, but you weren't comfortable saying it anymore. Where are you today? Morally defeated. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something's changed, Some, though. Yeah, something has changed. Think, All these people keep waiting for him. When is he going to turn to a philosopher king? It's his time he should become Abraham Lincoln. He's Donald Trump. He's, you know, it's all aggression. It's all ignorance. It's all the time. But I do not, I think he's going to have a bad week this week. I think he'll probably rally in New York, and it'll all come down to, like, the California. The people in the Republican Party are not going to stop. Look at that Rent's previous interview today. Yeah. Like, we had the, the week that we had with Donald Trump, he's a catastrophe for the party. Previous is off in La La Land, talking about technical stuff and not really seizing the mantle. That's where the Republican establishment, so they're not going to beat him. The only way he gets beat is if he internally collapses and if his supporters morally collapse because of bad defeats in places like California and New York. They're like Oklahoma at the end of the Villanova game. There's nothing there, but nobody's going to take it away from him. You think David's right? Or I feel as if though something changed. I mean, you look at what's happening on the ground in the technical parts of this, right, where you have Tennessee party chair making sure he's putting party operatives into the delegate slots even in the trump seats that they're that they're at least seeding this so that they can stop trump if they have the opportunity here's where republicans are right now they get to decide if they want to have a civil war if trump wins or a civil war if trump loses there is no winner out of this whole fight so he can either come in to cleveland with the amount of delegates i think wisconsin will tell us whether or not he will be able to get 1237 he loses wisconsin by a big amount he, i don't think he's going to be able to make that up or it'll be very close or we go to cleveland and we have another civil war where yeah technically they could take it away from him they have this is how it works right this isn't incorrect the delegates select who the president is but there are going to be a whole bunch of Republicans very upset about it, even people who didn't vote for Donald Trump, because they see, as you pointed out, is this fair? Is this fair? And that is going to just split this party apart. And anybody who thinks that Donald Trump's just going to go away if he loses this, like, oh, well, he's not going to be able to get on a ballot. He's got Twitter yeah. and he's got cable TV and he's going to spend all of his time there. I mean, I'm curious, you know, he's talked a lot about... Uh, NATO this week in weird ways. He's talked a lot about nukes and nuclear policy. I'm just curious, what do the folks at the Pentagon think? And I'm not talking about the political operatives. I'm talking about the career folks who are going to be there if Trump's elected president or if Clinton's elected president. No, they were appalled. Uh, you know, last week I was on a Navy cruiser in the South China Sea that was doing this diplomatic dance with China. Sure. We had a Chinese ship that was trailing us. And several times I got into conversations with sailors about, you know, this is all about how we, you know, how we strategize in a really important area. Could Donald Trump even handle something like this? This is some, And then you have this week with Donald Trump's messages about, and what he said about South Korea and Japan, which the Japanese prime minister immediately uh, uh, recanted uh, or, or, or dismissed. But, and you have that juxtaposed again Against President Obama's Washington nuclear summit, right. in which you had heads of states from all over the world sitting here carefully talking about nuclear disarmament and how do we go about doing it. I just think when you look at all of the things that happened to Donald Trump this week, and the abortion issue was horrible for him, but I think the nuclear issue, I think, ends up uh, scaring people, particularly at the Pentagon and the national security apparatus, a whole lot more. All right. If Trump falls, though, the beneficiary is Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz 
is if Ted Cruz wins Wisconsin, Charles, is it because there are a whole bunch of Cruz Republicans, or is he really benefiting from Stop Trump right now? Well, I think he's benefiting from the Stop Trump right now. Clearly, it's getting late to get to the dance, and they were looking for a dance partner, and Ted Cruz was the guy. Yeah, why Cruz and not Kasich, though? I, 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 some of us would have thought Kasich right. might when fit the state. When you look at the matchup from uh, Kasich, you would think uh, he would match what the conservative brand would be in Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin's pretty conservative right now. Got the conservative governor, got a conservative legislature. They control both houses, and they have a conservative high court. He got the backing Kasich of the former governor, Tommy Thompson, who's won there four times. Mm -hmm. But I think they felt that Cruz, when they were looking at the difference between Cruz and Kasich, they were saying, who can beat Trump? How can we get to the convention with a guy? And they felt Ted Cruz right. was the guy. David Brooks, what do you most likely think is going to happen now? Is it Trump, Cruz, or Paul Ryan? I think it's likely to be Trump. I think he's the walking dead. I think he'll get the nomination, and he will just go down to a crushing defeat. And will be known for, for 100 years from now, people will say, well, who's the biggest loser in American politics? And it never, won't be McGovern, it won't be Dukakis, the word Trump. And I hope when he's down there in Hades, he's aware of all that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there is subtle. There is subtle. Why do I have a feeling, why do I have a feeling Mr. Brooks is going to hear from Mr. Trump sometime on social media today? Anyway, with that. And we're back with Endgame. I want you to listen to something Bernie Sanders said Thursday. We have won six out of the last seven caucuses. Most of them, I love so much. And I think uh, that superdelegates should listen to the will of their people. If you get 60, 70, 80 percent of the vote in the state, you know what? I think superdelegates should vote for us. Okay. So we decided to crunch the numbers on that basis to see how much it would benefit Senator Sanders if all of the superdelegates in states he's won so far chose him. So take a look. Right now, looking at states where people have voted so far, the current superdelegate count in those states is Clinton with 253 versus Sanders with just 25 superdelegates, with some superdelegates still undecided. If those superdelegates vote the way their states have voted so far, then they would divide this way. Clinton would actually increase her lead a little bit, increase her total to 260. Bernie Sanders would get to 124 because some of those undecideds that were in their birth would get allocated to help Hillary Clinton. But that, those numbers just show you Hillary Clinton still would lead yeah, uh, with superdelegates, too. He doesn't have a path, does he? No. Look, this race is it, it's still going on, and it's important for Hillary Clinton to remain engaged, and I give Bernie Sanders a lot of credit for starting from zero and getting to where he is right now. It's an impressive, and he's made this debate about his issues, and he's made her fight on his turf. That said, the delegate math is not going to add up, and it's not working. But when you compare where Democrats are to where Republicans are. Democrats are having a skirmish right now. Republicans are in thermonuclear war. Right. Okay, it is not it, so. So it's a little bit messy, yeah. and so it's going to be a little harder for her. And maybe it's not over until June. But they are going to be united. Democratic partisans right now like Bernie Sanders as much as they like Hillary Clinton. They are not going to have a problem unifying the party in the way Republicans well, David, this is, uh, go ahead. Yeah. All right, let me just say, uh, I think Wisconsin's going to be good for Bernie Sanders. He's expected to win there. This is not going to be 2008, though, for Hillary Clinton, where she got clobbered by uh, double digits. This could be a single-digit win, but everybody knows that Bernie Sanders needs a big win. And you talked about April 5th, 1960, John F. Kennedy, you know, coming out of Wisconsin, getting some legitimacy. But think about it. April 5th, 1910, Wisconsin Wisconsin, I should say, Milwaukee was the first major American city, key word there, major American, to have and elect a socialist mayor. They've done it three times. So that's good news for Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Former Sanders. socialist mayor of Burlington. And David, what, uh, he voted in that election. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Well, you are just going to make everybody mad, aren't you? <laughs> what? Hillary Clinton is struggling to close out this nomination. Let's, let's call it what it is. She is struggling to do that. Amy's right. It is a skirmish. It is not. This, if, but if there wasn't a Republican fight, we'd be going, what's going on here? Yeah, Why can't she close the deal? If she were the, if Donald Trump didn't exist, we would all be talking about how she is the most unpopular nominee if she's uh, in right, the, recent she, American history. She would be that, right. right. Instead, now Donald Trump is be this other guy. What strikes me is there, there are two motivations for voters. There's philosophy, and Sanders sort of has that. But there's also party loyalty. I was watching your interview with her earlier, and I was thinking if Ed Muskie or Hubert Humphrey came back and they saw her, they thought that's what a Democratic candidate looks like. Ever since sounds like. Yeah, and so she's she's part of the party, the embodied history of the party. And so there, there's a machine-like quality. It's hard to get super excited by her, but there's a comfort level for Democratic voters. And that's carrying her, but it doesn't inspire her. I was all, yeah. but also struck, though, during your interview with, with Hillary, uh, with Senator Clinton, on your questions about abortion. And you guys spent a lot of time during that interview on about four to five minutes. It's something you don't do very often no, with Democratic candidates. But yeah. she answered.
that you and yeah. she went back and she had history and yeah. she had precedent to cite and she talked about third world uh, uh, other countries she went through and then I started imagining you doing that interview with Donald Trump and where he gets that when he's with Chris Matthews and he gets that deer with his mm -hmm. eyes caught look in his face where you see he's grasping for an answer and he's out of his depth and he's not sure how he's gonna answer it and I think what this week and what happened with Donald Trump played uh, the beneficiary of this the most, I think, is Hillary Clinton. Because if ever there was like you, you had like a uh, sort of uh, edging out the differences between between candidates. She's she's the one who I think is the winner. But, but I wonder the more clarity. It's funny. I, I agree. This week, this was the first time you thought, boy, she could really. You could see how she's going to match up pretty well with Donald Trump. Republican delegates are going to see that, Amy. Well, they haven't right? seen it yet. And right, this, but this is the most fascinating thing. There have been polls out now for a long time that show that he has problems with women, that shows that he has problems with pretty much every single demographic group. Except and white yet, men. Except for white men. And yet, it has not impacted him in these primaries. In fact, I went back and I looked at this point in 2012, almost 40% of Republicans said beating Obama was their top priority and they voted for Mitt Romney. Yeah. Today, 13% of Republicans say that electability is their top issue. Yeah. It's not about beating Hillary Clinton. It is about putting the candidate that they think represents their values better. And that's where Trump and Cruz mm -hmm. fit the bill. But this is how they ended up losing in 2012. That's how we get back to now we're now we're moving toward the general election. Now we're starting, you know, what we've seen so far are these two these two in these two primaries are the people yeah. on the left and the people on the Charles, right. Charles, let me ask you this with you have the final comment on this. Who's gonna have an easier time coming together? This sort of a, a polarized Democratic electorate in Wisconsin or a polarized Republican elector in Wisconsin. I think the Democrats are having an easier time coming together. You know, they they both are looking pretty good, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and I think when they at the end of the day, we saw it last night. You, they had the Founders Party more the Democrats. You call you could have called it the Unity Party. The Unity uh, they didn't fight that much. They really really didn't fight that much. So I think they'll be able to come together. Easily. All right. Thank you all. Charles, thanks for coming out. Thank you for having me. You gotta get out of here because I know you got some more work to do. That's all we have for today. All right, so that uh, takes care of Meet the Press. The uh, last one I'm going to go to is going to be uh, ABC.